What is up, peeps? This is Full of Win TCG, and I'm talking to you back to another YouTube video. And today we have a pretty unique deck. I actually really, really like this deck. I haven't seen it anywhere myself, um, so I don't know if it has been made before. But I kind of just threw it together and thought, hey, let's see if this works. And it kind of really does work really, really well. So I'm really happy to show you this one. Um, but of course, before we get into it, just a quick shout out to our sponsor, PTCGO Store. An online store where you can buy codes specifically for PTCGO for a pretty good price. But of course, if you want it at an even better price, use the code FTW for 5% off at checkout. So again, shout out to them for sponsoring the video. Um, yeah, this is a very weird deck. It's Spiritum Shedinja. Pidgeotto. So that, that's kind of what it is. Um, we could make a name, kind of make a name on the whim here. I don't know if this actually has been made before, but if you guys want to make a name for this deck, leave a comment down below with your suggestions. We'll see what we call it. Um, but it is a really, really fun um, and unique deck to play. Um, I really like the idea of playing Pidgeotto. Um, if you have three of them in play, which is what you usually want to have in this deck, you're seeing six cards every single turn without even needing to use a draw supporter. That allows you to free up uh, the uses of cards such as Elm's Lecture, which is quite a big card in this deck, and Brock's Grit. Again, another big, ca big card in this deck. Um, so you don't have to worry so much about drawing with Cynthia or something like that every turn when you have those cards out. And of course, even if you, if you do use Cynthia, you're seeing a ton of cards every single turn. Obviously, you're only drawing three cards, with it, but you're seeing six, of course, because it's basically an acro bike without the discard Pidgeotto's ability, that is. So uh, you're seeing a lot of cards that you get to choose from, which is pretty good. And Pidgeotto is a proven concept already, with its mill deck being one of the best decks in the current format. I believe it came second in the most recent regional. Um, is that the Cologne region? I don't know. Is it Cologne? No. It's in Germany somewhere, right? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it, yeah, it has been proven before, which is good. Um, so I thought I'd just mess around with it and see what we can do. We have other cards in here as well. Like we have Hooper. We also have Boswell for the four prize term. But one thing you realize in this deck is when you get things rolling, you have a lot of control with uh, using things like Boswell and your prizes, obviously. Um, you ideally want to have your spirit tombs set up with Sajinjas either in the early game or in the late game, regardless some point in the game. And at other points, you also want to use Hustle Belt to get some big one-hit KOs on some Tag Team GXs. This is very anti-Tag Team. It is a very rogue deck, but it functions uh, splendidly, which is really, really nice. Uh, oh no, I ain't seen this deck in ages. Okay, just in case it's Gyarados GX, we're going to drop the Shrine. Um, and I think we're going to go for another Pidgey. Setup play is big. It's a big deal, a big deal in this deck. So let's do that. Um, I wish we had an Elms. That would really seal the deal here but that's fine the great thing about elms is it finds most of your cards in most of your pokemon in the deck already it's fantastic um it finds you your pidgeotos it finds you your spiritums it finds you your ninkadas it finds your shedinjas so a lot of the cards we use in this deck elms gets all of them because of course they're all 60 hp or below obviously the only ones you're not getting are um the Hooper, that's the one, and the Boswell, but of course we play things like Pokemon and stuff, so, you know, it's not too hard to get them when you need them. This is a very, very unexpected matchup for this deck. I'm interested to see how this one goes. Um, but the idea is to have our opponent take a ton of knockouts, like way more than six to win the game. Um, we have three Shedinjas in the deck. We have Brock's Grit, which allows us to reuse these Shedinjas, which is really good. Um, so ideally, on an average basis, you want to be able to use four Shedinjas. Almost forcing your opponent to knock out 10 Pokemon to actually win the game. Um, and with the amount of damage output this deck has, sp specifically against GX decks, you can get some really good damage on the board before they get anywhere near that number. So it's pretty good. I'm intrigued by what this deck actually is now. I don't know if it's the... GX or not? All right, what's this? Flip a coin of heads, shuffle your dirt hand into a deck and draw six. Oh, okay. All right. Cool stuff, cool stuff. But it, I'm guessing this is Gary Dose, the, well, the Gary Dose that I'm thinking of. <laughs> Evidently. I was going to say eviously. See, one thing I've noticed, and you've probably noticed this in my videos, is for some strange reason, um, I think of two words at the same time when describing something or saying something. And then I put them together to make one weird word. So instead of saying evidently or obviously, I go obviously. Pay attention to that. You'll notice that in a lot of my videos. Right, I really want to pull a Spiritomb here. Um, that would be really dope. So I'm going to go for the Pidgeotto. Just seeing what we've got. Okay, that's 
unfortunate, but that, you know what? Is what it is. We can poke a gear anyway and hopefully hit it, but we need to hit two cards. That's an energy and a um and a spirit tomb. Not the easiest thing to hit in this deck, but you know, fingers crossed. There we go, unfortunately. However, we do have the spirit tomb, and this Pidgeotto really could find us an energy. Odds are low, but you know what? One can dream, right? One can dream. Even if not, we can throw something onto the spirit. We can throw the Shedinja onto the Spirit Tomb. So that's fine with me. Oh, we got the rainbow as well. Sweet. Okay. Good stuff. So we've pretty much got the setup going. It's not the most ideal, but we have Elms to work with already. So that's cool. We have the Elms in hand, which is nice. Let's promote this Spirit Tomb. Go for the building spite. And let's take this bad boy out of here. So they're going to at least, at least need another turn to set up their deck, which is good. Um, also, you may have noticed this bad boy here, this microphone. I've just punched it, sorry. Um, this is a much better microphone than what I do use for the channel, which is this one here. Um, <laughs> bloody hell, don't fall apart on me. Jesus Christ. Um, right, that, that can be fixed. Don't worry, that's normal. Um, yeah, so this, this old piece, I've had this for years. I mean years i was in high school when i first came across this very microphone it has served me well um but then there is a kind of a downfall to this i'm using this in today's video because i have it here and i'm able to use it however this microphone is actually going to be mainly used for my music that is a lot more audio orientated or oriented is that the word a lot more audio yeah oriented so what i'm going to do is have a stand up to my right hand side with this microphone and isolator. So I will have to go back to using this one, I'm afraid. But as I'm sure, you guys probably really don't, um, I'm gonna say don't care that much, but the difference is not that um, different. Um, did that make any sense? The difference is not, <laughs> it's not that much of a difference when it comes to the audio output. And in a YouTube video, when the file is all compressed and stuff, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Obviously it does, it's better, but I would say it's it's not that much of a difference. So maybe in the future, maybe sometime I can get a second one. But that's that's dreaming. That's 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 dreamer stuff. Plus, if I was going to get other upgrades, I would probably go for things like a green screen and stuff like that before going down the line of a microphone, um, which I think is my next real pursuit. Obviously, I've um, had a lot of money put into the music side of things, but that's because it's working out really well for my brother. So I want to help him out as much as I can. Hello. Um, also, yeah, they quit, which is dope. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, this is, I want to put some money, of course, into the YouTube stuff as well. And, uh, that would be probably buying things like green screens and stuff and, and some proper lighting because I'm still just using my phone. It's just my phone is my lighting right now. So I'd like to get some uh, correct lightning. Woo! Good stuff. Right. So I kind of want to get three Pidgeys just straight, straight three Pidgeys here. No playing around. Yes, I know I could get a Spirit Tomb out and start charging it up, but... The setup play is just so crucial. We can attach the buzzwall and I guess do some poke damage. Uh, what are we up against? If this Pokemon has any energy, it has no retreat. Oh, that's cool. Um, there we go. I believe this card, when Lost Thunder came out, was used a lot in pre-release decks, I think. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think this card is the best. Oh, we got the Paralysis Cure. Yikes. Well, tell a lie. It's, it's not really going to be an issue. They're one-shotting us anyway. Um, again, a non-GX deck, which is kind of crazy because um, Little Dark Fury is actually talking about this on Twitter and I joined in a little bit. Uh, things like non-GX decks are really not as good as they, I would say, should be. And I say that very, very carefully um, because what I mean is that the meta is extremely GX oriented. Um, obviously, with there being so much support for certain decks... Um, and not there being a wide range of support that allows variety in the game, which is a problem in my opinion. Right, do we Elms again? Yeah, I think we do. I think we just want to get things out and things going here. So let's do let's do a Spiritomb and Incarda and another Pidgeotto. So we can start setting up the play here. So you can see how crucial Elm is. It's so good for the setup. It's just... It's busted. <laughs> it's busted. Um, let's... I don't mind committing a lot of energy to this buzzwall here. We could really see some stuff. And start building this spirit tomb up, which is nice. Let's go for a Pidgeotto here. We've got another energy. That's good. So we're going to see three, uh, six cards here now, which is fantastic. Um, after playing an Elm. Obviously, we uh, take three. But you know what? I'm not complaining. Not complaining at all. Uh, power plant. 
not really that important. Ditto, definitely. All right, so we can come here with the poke on this sledgehammer. Next time we can attach this rainbow. I'd rather use the rainbow on the spirit tomb, but you know, I don't mind going for some swing arounds in the early game, trying to get some cheeky KOs, you know. Um, and we can recover the buzzwell very easily with Brock's grit. So honestly, it's good. It's good. We good in the hood, man. We good in the hood. So now we just need to look for our Shedinjas and start getting them out. Um, and that's really the setup. So I wish we was up against some sort of GX deck because I think the deck would really shine. But again, this is the, this is the ladder for you. <laughs> but I'm still interested to see what they've got going on. Obviously, they've got a Blastoise. So is it just a Blastoise Curum deck? I don't know. Maybe this is just a tech uh for free retreat which i guess is cool yeah it can attack would i say emolga would be better if you're just using it for free retreat probably <gasps> oh i'm excited now i see this and i get happy okay let me start looking for them shrines now there's one big concern and i'm gonna have to address it as soon as possible that is uh it's gx attack will absolutely annihilate me it will win the game so uh, once I get this Nincada out, I'm looking for my Mew because, yeah, I'm not having that happen. No way, Jose. Okay, let's um, go for an airmail again. All right, we got the Shedinja. Sweet. Uh, let's get that into play. Probably throw it on the Buzzwall considering it's just sitting in the active. Uh, but before we do anything else, let's see what we've got. Another Shedinja. I'd rather take the Cynthia. I really need to find... Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this. And now I'm going to go for the Cynthia. So I see six cards plus the two on the Pidgeotto. There is the Mew. Okay, sweet. And a Shrine. Oh, wow, that is perfect. Okay, good. Ideally, I would have liked to bench another Ninkada. But, boy, that thing is not doing its GX attack. Never, nah, not in a million years, my friend. Yes, yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows. Oh, Lord, he knows. Uh, right, do we need another energy? Not really. Pokecom? I got, again, not really, but sure. You know, it's fine. Um, reset stamp? Definitely no. Come on, hit one heads. Isn't that... A, a, oh, it's just... Oh, they're resistant. I did not know that. That's interesting news, at least. Um, but with this hustle bell, we can do some serious stuff as well. I believe if we go to 50 damage with a hustle bell, I think we're hitting 220, which is serious business. And that, after this is chipped down a little bit, yeah, that's some serious stuff. Some serious damage output. Um... That we could use. So that's kind of cool. I believe the max you can get on this without a hustle belt is 160, if I'm correct. Yeah. So even then, a Shedinja attached to it, one energy, 160 damage. Even if they get the KO, it's just not happening, which is dope. We could even play. I did not think about this, but. Oh, wow. Okay. It's come to mind. Uh, let me make this play before I say anything else because I've kind of got a cool. Right, you're activated. I don't need to attach a rainbow onto you. Let's let's make the play before I say anything else. Get a Cynthia out, I guess. Why not? You'll notice this deck kind of builds a big hand as well, which is kind of dope. Power plant. I mean, not that big a deal because Keldeo is not going to be an issue. We don't play any GX or EX. Let's go for Elm. Yeah, so we can get more Spirit Tombs and Encarders and stuff out later on. Uh, again, more Elm. And I don't mind holding this hand. We've got a pretty good spot here. We don't play any Switch because we don't really need to. Um, maybe that could be a card we could play, actually, that I think about it because we would have a KO on this. But if we get double heads here, we've got a KO. So that's that's fine with me. I think this hand is pretty good. I don't really want to play the Elm yet. Do I? No, I'm scared of filling my deck too much. Um... Let's just, let's just, yeah, let's, let's go for a swing around. Double heads, come on. One, two, nice. We got a K, wait, what? Oh, do you know what I'm thinking? I'm so, I'm so used to playing Diancy with Boswell. I thought it was 140. <laughs> oh, forget it. I'm just stupid. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> um, this deck is kind of, is it big brain? I would say it's a bit big brain. Um, although it kind of does just play itself. Once you've got the Pidgeotas out, it just plays so smoothly. I absolutely love it. Um, and the great thing is with Spiritomb and stuff, um, you don't have to worry about 
your bench space being tight because it's just a basic with single energy attack it's very free to use um so that's also something pretty that, that's pretty cool as well so you don't have to worry about getting something down and charging it up in time before you know they start going around KOing things um one thing you would need to watch out for is not having a pokemon to attack in play and then you know benching a spirit tomb because your damage output is going to be very low if you rainbow energy and then building spite you're only doing 70 damage not that great so you want to have at least two spots in play active on bench to allow you to have a pokemon ready to charge up or whatever look at this it's just smooth sailing they are struggling they are really struggling we are working absolutely working it's not necessary to do this yet i mean that thing is getting slowly okay maybe we'll go for one building spite yeah so at least we know we only need one more to one hit ko this once it hits 220 so that's something again we don't really need anything else and i don't want to unnecessarily thin my deck um to the point where it starts becoming a problem i'll let, I'll, let, I'll at least play one elms and get get this roll in i'd say yeah let's do that let's just get these bad boys so if we do need it we've got it there in our hand um and this is my point right we could draw another three cards on top with the pidgeotto so all right let's just go for the, the ko here sweet stuff so yeah, that's why you could confidently play things like Elms and where you're going to see Brock's Grit in this deck because the hand gets big, very big, very big. So that's kind of dope. Anyway, here comes that Keldeo. I don't believe it's going to one-shot us unless it goes for its GX attack. In which case, we're going to respond with that Spirit Tomb and just smack it. Absolutely smack it. Now, the big problem here is we can't really go for the Shedinja stuff right now because of the Mew being down um, and having two Pidgeotto out. But if we get this taken down and that, then that's cool. That's we're, we're good. We're really good. I think we're just in a good spot anyway. So I don't think we have to worry so much about that. Although, tell a lie. We could technically bench one now and then next turn get it going. Um, no, actually, I've got a better idea. Yeah, I've got an idea. I have an idea. Um, let's go for MA. I'm going to look for one specific card here. And we might actually get it. So what I'm basically trying to do is find Box Grit and recover the Buzzwall. So we can, you know, comfortably attack into the full price turn. And then Buzzwall can come in and do some good damage as well. So if we can get Box Grit, there we go. There we go. All right, smooth, smooth play, smooth play. There we are. So we know that's back. We can get at any point because our hand is full. We have Pokecoms. We can get Buzzwell whenever we want, which is just dope. Um, we can retreat to this. We don't even need to building spite. Just anguish cry here for 190. Oh, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, so that's down. Nice, simple. Oh, this deck is juicy, man. It is it is so juicy. I love it. I love it so much. I'm excited. Uh, it's been so long that I've made, like, since I've made a rogue deck that I'm super, super happy with. And I think can really stand up to the top tier decks. Um, I did come up against a Mew 3 deck with this before and absolutely smashed it. So that was pretty cool. Oh, man. I'm loving this. I'm absolutely loving this, which is cool. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's see what they got going on. And they can charge this up, but boy, that's hella risky. Now, you could play cards in here like Custom Catcher, but I haven't really found the space to do it. And I'm a bit scared to go and tink twinkle with it a little bit, you know, play around. Um, because I really don't want to ruin its flow. Although, I, could, I guess I could, could just clone the deck and uh, try and throw some Custom Catchers in there. But I think, um, is it Great Catcher? Is that what it's called? In the next set would be a fantastic fit in here because we'd be able to just whack this bad boy up and then take game wow i took a I had a weird accent there whack this bad boy up <laughs> right so they're gonna come and obviously take us out we're gonna bait this uh full price turn for them we're gonna play the stamp and we're gonna buzz well we are going to be fine um again we're giving up prizes willingly here but it's cool it's cool and the great thing is, is we don't have to worry about 
building up spite on another spirit tomb. So what we can do is actually get this buzzwall now while we're here. Just get it, get it out. In fact, I don't think I should have done that, but you know, here we are. Um, we'll get the Ninkada down ready for the buzzwall next turn. That's what I'm thinking, at least. Uh, we don't need to play anything else. We don't even need to... Well, Lusamine could be decent, right? No, even Lusamine's not needed right now. Um, I think I think we're good. In fact, if, if, if there's one thing I would change is play two Lusamine and two Brox Grit, not one Lusamine and three, which is what I'm running. I think three Brox Grit is a bit overkill. Um, and the Lusamines are good for recovering Elm's Lecture and Brox Grit, which again, you have time to do because of the Pidgeotos. Um... I'm holding this. I'm holding this hand. Uh, I'm kind of scared of a judge, though. But you know what? We, we can get out of that, right? Um, yeah, I think I think we're good. We've got the KO on this thing. We're hitting 90, 100 damage. And then, obviously, we're going to come back with the Buzzwell and the Shedinja play. Yeah, we are good. We are smooth sailing here. So, let's get another one down. So, you can see here, we have so much control on the prizes they take. I absolutely love that. We now know... When we can get the Buzzwell out, we're letting them take us out so we can play the Buzzwell. That's something we don't have to do, but we can now because we have that level of control, um, which is just super cool. Absolutely great. And uh, the biggest benefit I think we have in this matchup here is our consistency is wild. This deck, however, doesn't really have any Pokemon supporting its consistency. Obviously, you have the Blastoise to accelerate energy and stuff, but... Other than that, you have nothing to really support its consistency. Oh, that's a bit overkill. But I guess that makes sense because they can actually... Yeah, they can they can take out our Buzzwell in response. But we again, we have the Shedinja. And funnily enough, if we really want to, and I think we can, we can recycle Buzzwells and reuse Sledgehammer, <laughs> which is mad. Okay, you're going to see what I mean, okay? We're going to have... The ability to reuse our Buzzwell Sledgehammer after the turn, even if even if it gets KO'd. So we're going to drop that here. Then we're going to bench another Ninkada. All we're going to need next turn is an energy. That's all we're going to need. Um, which I'm actually going to fit my deck now to search for. Done. See? So next turn, this Buzzwell will probably go down. Um, we can just Pokecon for the Buzzwell, throw in this Jinja. Go again. And we can do that pretty much constantly until we run out of energy or run out of that combo. So a little mini combo there, which is cool. Um, man, I just love how much utility there is to this deck. It's just... It's stupid. Absolutely stupid. Um, and I'm in love with it. Right, so let's get another Spirit Tomb out. I guess, why not? Could have got Cynthia, but we've already got it. We've got everything we need for another Buzzwell next turn. Sweet. We can stamp them again, but I want them to get a few more cards in their hand before I do that. Um, which is kind of cool as well. Right, do I need to Lusamine specifically for anything? Not really. Don't need to Brox Grit. I guess I could Brox Grit, but that's not really needed right now. Everything's looking smooth. We're just going to come in here and go for this Buzzwell nice and easily. Again, we've not got the KO, I'm afraid. But... Um, even if they've got it in return, we're going to come back with another Buzzwall Sledgehammer with me, uh, with another Shedinja. <laughs> it's just stupid. It's, ah, uh, this is mad. This is absolutely mad. I love it. I love it to pieces. Um, so this is kind of similar, um, actually, to the uh, Pidgeotto Lock deck, right? Yeah, I think the Pidgeotto Lock deck plays things like Mareep for Paralysis, uh, for, for Sleep, and then Slumbering Forest. Um, and then you have the, I forgot what it's called. Is it, it's not, no, no, no. It's the ice Pokemon that does 10 damage plus item lock, right? That's something else that you have. This one is 10 times more aggressive. It is, it's powerful. It's powerful. And it has just as much control, which is in insane. So it's a more aggressive version um, of that deck, I would say. That's probably the best way to describe it. Right. Here we go. Here we go. Another, <laughs> another puzzle play. Nice and easy. Uh, I'm an idiot. I, I should have Brock's Grit, but that's fine. I guess what we'll do is we'll get another Ninkada. What's our energy situation? We have one energy left. Wow, that's scary. That's actually bad. That's actually bad. I didn't think about that. All right, let's do that. And I think it's actually better 
after doing the Boswell play to try... Uh, Boswell is harder to take out. All right, let's go for the grit here. Uh, I guess we have to recover all of these. Let's get rid of a Pidgey with this Pokecom. Get the Buzzwall out. Yeah, let's do that. Right, sweet. Then we're going to Shedinger onto that. Okay, so now, now I'm thinking to myself... Okay, that does 30 damage to itself. That's not good. How we're gonna uh how we're gonna respond. I guess I could just building spite now. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Let's build the spite up. And then we're gonna need to try and find that. So let's thin the deck again. We need to search for that energy. We've got it. Sweet. And we got the hustle belt. So next turn with it we're guaranteed 160 damage. So that's that's cool. Uh, are they saying well played for a good reason? I don't know. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> um, I'm trying to make sure I'm doing everything right here. This is the big frame part of the play. Yeah, that's cool. And then we come in. Sweets. Ah, uh, either way. So, we've actually been able to reuse Sledgehammer. <laughs> after the Boswell's been KO'd. Again, four prizes in again. And if we had more energy... We could have continued doing this. Like, there is a loop there. There is loop potential. It's kind of crazy. Yes, low power. So, yeah, we could have looped that. 100% with the Brock's Grits and stuff. Yeah, that has insane loop potential. <laughs> so, just sledgehammer every turn. Go for it. <laughs> Until game ends. <laughs> oh, that's mad. Obviously, it's not infinite. We don't have a Ranguru to recover resources and stuff. But, hey. Hey. Although, with Brock's Grit, I guess if you'd play some basic energy, you could recover the energy. So, we don't actually play any basics, but... I might recommend it. I mean, maybe replace Low the unit. Ah, see, the problem is, if you replace the units, I'm going to turn that off because it's going to keep doing that. If you replace the units Power with basics, off. then you can't really use the Buzzwalls without rainbows. And you want to use the rainbows on the spirit tombs, right? Anyway, that is game. Am I correct? Is that game? That is indeed the game. So we just go in like this and I get the hustle belt. And then we build Spite. So although they took loads of KOs. I don't know how many exactly. I didn't count. Um, well played. There we are. We come out on top quite comfortably actually. So much control. So much damage. I am in love with this deck. It's my favorite deck to play right now. And uh, I think you can see there why it works so well. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I don't think I have anything else to say. I think the deck has spoken for itself there. Which is really good. Uh, the way I would suggest playing it is, of course, getting the free Pidgeotos out as soon as possible and then going from there. Um, and only play things like Mew and stuff when, if and when completely necessary. Um, so when you're up against things like Pika Rom and stuff. Right, is it, is it this one? Yeah, 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 there we go. So it has the ban because of the Lusamine, which is banned from Expanded. So this is the deck. Go and try it out. It is crazy. I absolutely love it. So I'll leave this in the description. Maybe one slight change. Get rid of the third Brox Grit and go for another Lusamine. It's not that big of a change, but, you know, it's something you can do. Um, maybe go down to two unit energy and add some two basic energy plus an energy recycler if you do go low on energy. I've not really had that problem at all. I think that game was the closest I've ever come to that, though. So it may not be necessary. But there are a few things you can do. You can add Black Market and add some basic um, darkness energies so that if you don't have Sajinda and stuff, you can still comfortably throw a Spirit Tomb out with a Hustle Belt and them still not take the prize card. So there's that. It also could work out with Hooper as well. Um, so, you know, that's something also to bear in mind. Actually, I don't know. Let me check quickly. I know this is a quick side sidetrack here, but I don't know if Black Market is basic. Ah, so when a dark Pokemon that has any dark energy attached to it, they take one for your prize. So you don't need basic. So you can actually, oh, in that case, maybe get rid of the power plant. But, oh, that's a tough one. I'll leave that for you to figure out. But throwing in Black Market could be a big deal as well. Um, kind of partnering up with Shedinja on the turns where you don't have them. So, there we go. So, that's one improvement already there. Um, anyway, with that said, again, I just want to give a, another quick thanks to our sponsor, PTCGO Store, for sponsoring the video, as per usual. Great lads. Um, but yeah, try this out.
I would heavily recommend it. Of course, leave a like if you did enjoy and do subscribe for more wacky decks. Uh, but of course, most importantly, please do take care of yourself and peace.